people who work with alleged abductees or documented abductees uh, point out that a human being can be influenced in any of many ways by interactions with aliens. I'm confident that is the case. And when you consider the degree of technology that they must have to be able to travel from a distant part of the galaxy or universe to planet Earth, then you begin to realize that that's not so outrageous a claim. It's not so outrageous a possibility that they might be able to influence influence human beings to get them to do things to the detriment of the American citizens or the general human population of the planet. Well, this has been going on, you know, talk about even going back after World War II in Antarctica, you know, the, you know, some strange things happened up there, you know, uh, yeah. you know, so it kind of, you know, things I think probably have been going on. Now, also, you kind of uh, mentioned about passive radar to detect uh, UFOs uh, directly. Uh, why don't you give us some information about that? Yeah, it's, I think, Gary, I'm delighted to have an opportunity to talk about it because although people often associate me with the UFO hotline and the National UFO Reporting Center, my greatest contribution to the field of ufology was my proposal to use passive radar to detect UFOs directly instead of having to rely on fuzzy photographs and eyewitness accounts. What passive radar does is it capitalizes on listening for the reflections of radio and television signals. Commercial, you can use commercial radio and television signals that are radiated up into the sky. And if there's something up there that reflects radio signals or photons, you, if you have an array of antennas on the ground in a sensitive a sensitive receiver and a powerful computer, you can detect the presence of something up in the near-Earth environment, up in the atmosphere or beyond. And I first uh, realized this shortly after I'd taken over the hotline. I came to this conclusion. I had this revelation in uh, late January of 1995. And published my works. I've published a couple articles on it that, in fact, people can read my article for the Mutual UFO Network Symposium that took place in Denver, Colorado back in 2006. Uh, The day that article was published on the Internet, I got a telephone call from a gentleman who's a Ph.D. He was a senior officer at the Central Intelligence Agency, And he said that one of his retired colleagues had just sent him a copy of the uh, abstract of my paper. And he was calling to congratulate me on my line of reasoning. And he said during that conversation, Gary, that if I built the system that I described in my paper, I would be successful in answering the question of whether UFOs are real or not. This is a senior CIA officer Ph.D. caliber, Ph.D. in physics, uh, suggesting that there's a very good chance we might detect UFOs with a passive radar system. But if people are interested, they can uh, read my paper on our homepage at ufocenter.com, or they're welcome to communicate with me via email or telephone. Oh, great. You know, I'm glad you're there to, you know, to take the reports. And I'm sure you get people, too, that call up and they're really in a panic mode, too. I I bet you get a lot of those. Yeah. People, when they see their first UFO, as I addressed earlier in this program, oftentimes they're very galvanized. They're shocked by what they've just seen. And they need somebody to talk to whom they can trust and whom they can trust to listen to them carefully as to what they had just seen. So this, you're right, it uh, is sometimes a great relief to people to just be able to discuss something that was completely 
outside their domain of reality, if you will. Well, you know, I, how can I say it? It when, you know, it really changed my life when I saw one. Uh, it, it just made me think, you know, I mean, when you're a little kid, you know, when you're out camping or out laying at night, you know, yep. looking at the stars, you know, you, when I was little, I never thought about UFOs or anything like that. After I seen one, you know, it made me, yep. you know, open my eyes up so much that, uh, it's scary. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I would think, honestly, if uh, they were friendly, they would be down on Earth and, you know, trying to help mankind. And it makes me, you know, just, I don't know, it just makes me kind of wonder if they are actually are friendly or, uh, again, just like that old Twilight Zone uh, episode, you know, maybe people are being disappeared for reasons that uh, are more than experimental. Well, that's a possibility, although I'm comforted by the fact that we are no, we represent no or very little threat to these creatures. So they wouldn't feel intimidated by mankind. They might be shocked by what we do to ourselves, but uh, I don't think they would be, uh, feel it necessary to exterminate mankind uh, since we're not a threat to them. Yeah, I hope that's the case anyway. Well, yeah, and I, me too. Uh, but if the technology is the way I suspect it is, they wouldn't even have to come down here and to destroy man like War of the Worlds. I got a funny yeah. feeling they could be out there somewhere and just you know, there's the end of Earth, right? Like that. Yeah. So I'm not trying to scare people. So I, that you know, just got to have your eyes open. There is something going on, and the government, you know, is still not coming forward, and I think they should, along with yeah. the. The press. I mean, what have you ran into with the press yourself? Yeah, it's very interesting. I'm, I am shocked that I'm not being overwhelmed by queries from members of the press as to what's going on vis-a-vis -vis UFOs. The other thing I will say is there appears to be a very sharp distinction or dichotomy between the attitude that major newspapers take, national or statewide newspapers, and the attitude that local and regional newspapers take with regard to the UFO phenomenon. I receive calls all the time from journalists at small or local or regional newspapers wanting to know if we have any recent cases from their particular area to do a human interest story on UFOs. But trying to, trying to interest a, a journalist in a major newspaper is almost impossible, I've discovered. Uh -huh. A few exceptions, but uh, people just don't, people in the large newspapers apparently view themselves as sophisticates or they've been told by their editors that this is a subject that they will not deal with. Yeah, I wonder if they they don't deal with it because the government says they can't deal with it. Well, it, that's quite possible, but I don't know how the government would control all journalists or all editors or all publishers of a newspaper. It would be it would be well nigh uh, impossible for them to do so. I believe. Yeah, probably you're right on that. Have you ever had any uh, reporters come to you uh, with this citing them, themselves? Oh, yeah. Uh, or information that, you know, that they have, you know, ran into, you know, something interesting? Quite a number. And two newspapers come to mind immediately, and they're the Los Angeles Times and the Chicago Tribune. They were owned by the same company. I think they still are, in fact. But uh, on, I can tell you the date. It was March, Friday, March 28th, 2008. A journalist whose name was Thomas Alec Tizon, T-I-Z-O-N, still a journalist, I'm, I suspect. He was the bureau chief for the Los Angeles Times in Seattle. And he contacted me. I think in January of nineteen of two thousand eight it was not nineteen hundred two thousand eight, 
And he said he wanted to do a major article on the work I do. Well, he came out. I didn't have a lot of time to devote to this article because I was running in a campaign for the legislature at the time. But he came out. We spent the day together. He wrote a very nice article on the 28th of March, 2008. That article appeared on the front page page front cover of the New York or of the Los Angeles Times. Uh-huh. Well, he the next Monday he went to his office in downtown Seattle and his office had different keys. He was locked out of his office, but his entire office had been emptied by his employer. Oh wow. He was fired from his job. Thomas Alec Tizon, T-I-Z-O-N. Very, very nice guy to deal with. He was a very skilled journalist, a very good writer. And anybody can see his article on the front page of the Los Angeles Times. Again, uh, Friday the 28th of March, 2008. It does seem like, like the news media, you know, just doesn't want to cover it and you know it's it's pretty bad when you know uh they turn around and this did what they did to that gentleman yeah exactly and somebody who deals with this type of information all day every day as i do i find that i devote a great deal of time to just ruminating on what the significance of this information is And the thing that worries me the most, Gary, is the possibility that these institutions in our society, government, banking, newspapers, are being somehow influenced, either directly or indirectly, knowingly or unknowingly, by the presence of UFOs on this planet. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I I think if the government you know, comes out now and says, hey, there are UFOs and, you know, divulged it. I don't know how, um, you know, the people of the world, you know, would take it. You know, there's been all these cults, you know, that, uh, you know, committed suicide thinking they were going to be taken up, you know, on a UFO and go to a better place. And, you know, I just, uh, you know, it has two things. I think the public needs to know what's going on. But then again, I think if they came out and said, hey, there's UFOs, we don't know if they're friendly or not, uh, you know, um, of course, they would never say if they're friendly or not anyway, even if they weren't. Uh, I think you'd have a certain amount of people would be panicking. Yeah, I agree. And the reason, that I guess there are two reasons that I would say it's absolutely imperative that our government own up to what they know about this is, number one, We have a representative form of government in a dictatorship or some kind of totalitarian state. I guess the government would take the position that it's their option as to whether they want to tell their citizens about it or not. That's not an option for the American government, the U.S. government. Uh, They have a responsibility. They serve us, not the reverse. And I think, therefore, it's imperative that they share this extremely important information with the American people. It is, after all, the question of UFOs is, after all, the most important single scientific question that has ever confronted mankind. Are we alone or are we not? Clearly, the answer to that that question, from my vantage point, is we are not alone. The other reason is, the other reason that the U.S. government has a responsibility or should share this information with the American people is, if it does constitute some kind of threat, it's quite possible that some sixth grader, if he knows about the threat, could figure out a solution to it. You never know what direction a good idea is going to come at you from. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think... Therefore, this government has a responsibility to share with the American people what's going on. Interestingly, you know, uh, uh, Secretary Clinton, when she was running for the presidency, 